Hello friends, Christian Carter with Radius Financial Group and today we have another great video coming towards you. Um, today we are talking about FHA's self-sufficiency rule and how that rule applies to multifamily properties, right? And like every video, we're going to talk about the self-sufficiency rule, we're going to explain it, and then of course, we're going to go into an example because I love examples. So without further ado, uh, let's get right into it. All right, so let's get right into it, right? So let's go right into these self-sufficiency rules, shall we? Um, so let's talk about three things that are very important when it comes to the self-sufficiency rule. Um, now, quickly, this only applies to borrowers who are purchasing a three or four unit property with an FHA loan, right? So if you're using an FHA loan uh, and you're buying a single family or if you're buying you know, a duplex, like a two unit property, this rule does not apply to you. Um, likewise, if you're using a conventional loan and you're buying a three or four unit property, this rule will not apply to you. So it only applies if you're using an FHA loan to buy a three or four family property, right? All right, next one. Why, do, why does FHA do this? Well, the purpose is to ensure that the property's rental income uh, alone can cover the total monthly mortgage payment, right? So they don't want you to basically get um, into a property that's too expensive um, for that buyer to actually um, make the payments on, right? They want to make sure that the rental income is going to cover the monthly mortgage payment. And while we're on this point, uh, it's important to, uh, to um, point out that when we're talking about the total monthly mortgage payment, we're talking about everything here. So that rental income needs to cover the principal and interest on the mortgage. It needs to cover the uh, homeowner's insurance, needs to cover the mortgage insurance, real estate taxes, and then as well as any HOA uh, or condo fees associated um, with that property, right? And then um, lastly, this is a big question that we get. How are we going to know um, what the other units are going to be rented out for? Well, that's where we um, essentially hire an FHA approved appraiser and he or she is going to tell us how much each of those additional units in the multifamily property are going to rent out for, right? All right. Another thing that is very important here is the 75% rule, right? So only 75% of the rental income is considered in the self-sufficiency test, right? So what essentially what that means is if you rent an apartment out for $1,000 a month, we're going to take that $1,000 and we're going to take 75% of it, so $750, and use it for the self-sufficiency test. If you are confused, do not worry. You'll see an example right over here, because I love examples, that we're going to go over uh, soon. Um, and the reason why FHA does the 75% rule is uh, to account for you know, potential vacancies, um, account for maintenance expenses, uh, capital expenditures like you know, new roofs and water heaters and things like that. Um, so that's why we're only going to take 75% 75, 75 of that rental income to use towards the self-sufficiency rule. All right, best part of the video, at least my favorite part. Uh, let's go over an example real quickly. Um, now for this example, let's set up some ground rules here. We are going to be buying a four unit property, right? Using an FHA loan. So this self-sufficiency rule does apply to us. Um, the purchase price is going to be $500,000. Uh, our loan amount is going to be $490,943. If you don't know how I got that number, make sure you check out my video on um, FHA's 3.5% down payment, um, or just reach out to me, I'll send it to you. We have a rate here of 6.5%, and then the term is going to be 30 years, right? So all that together brings our total monthly mortgage payment to $3,873. And like we talked about before, that total monthly mortgage payment, that includes principal and interest, it includes real estate taxes, it includes FHA mortgage insurance, and it includes homeowner's insurance. For this example, we're not living in any type of HOA, so I didn't include that, right? All right, two examples. I'll give you a hint. One's gonna, one example is going to work, and the other example is not going to work. Let's get right into it, though. Example one here. So you're going to, um, let me back up. 
So for this property, we're buying a four unit property like we talked about, right? You're gonna live in one unit, probably the first floor, which means you're going to rent out the other three units, right? Um, so you can't buy a four unit property and try and use the income from all four units. That doesn't make sense because you're gonna have to live in one of those units, right? Um, so example one, rental income per unit. You're gonna charge $1,500 a month in rent for those three other apartments, which brings our total rental income to $4,500. Pretty simple, right? $1,500 per unit times three, because there's three units that you're renting out in the property. We get $4,500. We then take that $4,500, we uh, multiply it by 0.75, which of course is 75%, and we get a total of $3,375 per month. So that's our qualifying rental income that we're going to use to see if this property can pass the self-sufficiency test. And we know that if we have a mortgage payment of $38.73 per month, and those three uh, other apartments or units in that property are only going to bring in $33.75, then this particular property with these particular rents is not going to pass the FHA's self-sufficiency test. However, let's go on to example two and let's see how it does if we bump those rents up a little bit, right? So everything stays the same, right? The only thing we're gonna change here is let's say those rental, um, those, those apartments, those units, we're gonna rent them out for $2,000 per month, right? So of course, um, there's three units in the, in the property that we're renting out. So that brings us to $6,000 per month that we're getting in rental income. We are then going to take that $6,000, um, multiply it by 75%, which of course brings us to $4,500 per month, which if we compare this to our monthly mortgage payment of $3,873, this property with these rental incomes does pass the FHA's self-sufficiency test. So I hope that was helpful. All right, that's all she wrote. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do have uh, questions on other mortgage or real estate uh, related topics, I would love it if you could leave it in the comments below. That way I can make another video and uh, put it out there. Other than that, if you did like today's video, I would love it if you can give it a big thumbs up. That does help me. Um, and what helps me even more is if you subscribe to my channel, um, if you are enjoying, you know, the mortgage and real estate related uh, videos. Other than that, I hope you guys have a great day and I'll talk to you later. Adios.